Hey guys, I'm Johnny Flores and this is Lucia. And um, I wanted to kind of answer the question of what do I do with a garrote truck? Cause it's showing up a lot more in the extreme cowboy race. It's been around forever in working equitation and a lot more demos and freestyles are showcasing it. Um, this is what it is. It is usually a much harder piece of wood and it was used in Spain to herd cattle. Um, Cause the cows there actually want to charge at you unlike the cows here that run away from you. So roping wasn't the best idea. Um, and it was used to keep them away and kind of poke at them, but also to sort of bait them to come near you while still maintaining a good buffer. And you'll see that later in the video. Um, it's really fascinating because a lot of the techniques used with it were related to the techniques you would use as a lancer in battle, um, something that the, the Spanish brought to California and is very traditional. So I really hope you guys enjoy what I have to offer in this video and I hope it answers all your questions. Hey guys, wanted to show you a few ways to hold the garrocha. So the first way is to have, I'm just gonna exaggerate it, get your fingers out, your palms out, and you wanna hold it nice and loose, right in front of your chest, and then you can bring it back behind you, and then spin around here. Holding the same way, you can end up with it on this side instead, now with your palm and fingers facing towards you. And if you wanna get fancy, you can throw your hand up and put it behind your neck, especially in something like extreme cowboy racing. That's, those are just four easy ways to hold your girl show without having to adjust your hand and just dropping it. I wanted to show you guys how to pick up the garrocha um, traditionally. You usually have it on your side. You don't ever side pass into it. And you either do it from back to front or front to back. And so I have it here. And what I'm gonna do is bring it over my shoulder and just feed it. There you go. And you have to have your arm wrapped up and around. And I usually like more in the back so that it actually holds itself instead of fighting to hold it up here. And the other way to do it, that wasn't very traditional, but for the sake of the video. You have your hand again over here. She's sniffing it. Walk forward. And I'm just sliding. Oh. So guys, to uh, freshen up your session, um, with the garrocha, I'm just going to show you some of the body control maneuvers that you can do using this to give you and your horse a point of reference. Don't try to rush anything if your horse is scared of this. That will not make things better. Slide the garrocha down. Lift over my head so I don't get hurt. I like the garrocha because it's sort of a tattletale of how good or bad my circles are. And you usually don't hold it really tight with a depth grip, and I don't either. But I want to see how much my arm moves in front of my chest. And right there, it moved from my left shoulder to my right shoulder, so it could have kept her circle better. Oh, you can back up, come back up, and then lift it. Obviously, you have to lift it. If they hit their head, they'll be scared of it. And spin. That's another cool thing. It can help your horse learn to kind of lower their head and spin. Um, sometimes they start out and get hoppy. And again, see my hand is moving out. I love it. If I hold my hand in the same spot, it's telling me just how much I'm not doing. Or I pull it out, it really helps my circle. Next thing that you can kind of work on is a half, not a half pass, a, uh, a leg yield. But yielding outwards. That's actually pretty good. That line is relatively straight. But she didn't keep going forward. She lost forward motion there. And my arm moves. So again, it's really helping me. It's hard to have that point of reference and be able to see things in circles and angles all the time. So that's a nice perk of this tool. Oh, then again, stopping, turning under. Working on really tight circles. Another thing you can work on using the garrocha is the leg yoke. Not a leg yoke, a uh, half pass. And start your half pass here. And she needs a little bit more hip in that half pass. And then resist your circle. Just gives you more point of reference. And then you can the right. When I'm half passing her, I want her either straight or with her hip. By definition, it's a haunches in and a back. So again, over my head, lift it high, don't be afraid to use your arms. 
Right here, this is a much better enough pass. She's actually leading with her hip. And that pole's moving in a very nice diagonal. And I can be fancy and put it over my shoulder. See how tight my circles can get. Another thing you can work on is the haunches in. Let me set her up just right. This will really help you with your leads and just overall really good engagement on the high, furthering that collection. So we we'll start right now. I want her to bring her butt in, really lead with that butt. This is sort of a precursor to pirouettes, great lead departures, lead changes, all that good stuff. Losing a little promotion, kiss her to keep her going. So another thing you can work on is a shoulder out. And what that is, is basically moving the hip so that your horse creates a three track. It was used by the Knights to evade horses that, it was a defensive move in battle. And it's also used by bullfighters in Spain even today. So right now I'm trying to have her front feet in one track and her back feet in two. So it's something of a diagonal. And it is a very common move used today to prevent those horses from getting gored in Spain. Great move for um, all of your side movements. Really helps get more control of that hip. Another thing you can do with this thing is make the horses spin under it, keep walking. Really helps establish forward motion, gets them into a cadence and keeps their head a little bit lower. So right here, so try to do a spin. Sometimes you do have to adjust your hand to accommodate that spin. If I didn't, my wrist would have to bend a lot and keep walking and then try it again. Maybe this time I'll stop her. Oh. And then keep going this way. You don't want your horse into a rhythm. Again, keep walking and you could try the other. Get her spinning. And then keep walking. That spin was a little choppy at the end. She didn't really fish, but that's okay. That's why we're working on this. It also helps me establish all my one-handed training in all these various movements, which needs some work. <laughs> People using a garrocha is how much they they their seat, they forget that they're riding. They do a circle and they think it's great and they have this death grip and then their horse goes out and they're like that. And how much I'm moving my poor horse, especially because she's little, you can really see it. The whole idea of a garrocha is so that it can slide. Maybe my circle isn't perfect, but what she's feeling is my small adjustment. She's not feeling me compensate for a poor circle. Staying very straight and very upright, and she's staying balanced as a result of that. And also, something that you can practice, come on girl, is picking it up, one, because that is not easy. Letting it slide, it's all about the sliding. You don't have a death grip on this thing. When you have a death grip, it makes it easier for you to one, look choppy, two, compensate, and three, drop it. So you let it slide down and practice your circle here. You can even, if you're feeling adventurous, go without hands, maybe even work on that face a little bit more, get her more bent and looking towards it. Go towards it like earlier, pick it up. Now you can drop it the other way. Sometimes in my practice, I like to be a little fancy just to see how good I can get it. Drop it over that shoulder. And that wasn't very good. She kind of drifted out right there, but instead of going like this, like, ah, I stayed straight and I just kind of pulled it a little bit. And you can also go one-handed here. Just kind of play with that. But it's all based on sliding. You don't have a death grip on these things. You let it slide and it maintains that fluid, very calm um, demeanor with you. If you tense your muscles, it's just gonna be a domino effect to your horse. So I hope this video helped you guys uh, kind of figure out some new things that you could try with your horses. I hope it shows any little holes or things that you can really excel on with your horse. And I really hope it spices up your routine. Hope oh, I feel like often we get really caught up in working in just the arena and it's just so boring. Um, but for any of you guys who want to go buy one, they are at Home Depot in the molding aisle. You just 16 to 14 feet is usually what I use. Um, it's not traditional, but I'm on a budget and the ones from Spain are pretty expensive. 